whoo, you need to turn me down. Praise God. Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two. Just use that slide bar behind you. There you go. That'll, that's a, that, that'll, that'll really uh, let your uh, fine tuning. All right. Praise God. Well, we made it. You know? We made it. We've stepped over the threshold. And when I say that, today I hope you understand more about that when we're done. You know, a lot of people partied last night. I had a little bit of fun. But I knew. I knew in all the fun, there were greater things going on than the eyes could see. Amen? And I'm telling you, I would not trade being born in 1962 for anything. Because I'm going to be in my prime when I see the coming of my Lord. Amen? I'm going to talk to you a little bit about that today because, boy, I tell you what, the Facebook is just full of Jesus is coming, Jesus is coming, Jesus is coming. Hurry up, get saved. Okay? So we're going to talk a little bit about that here in just a minute, but I'm going to start out right here in Proverbs chapter number 4. Um, verse number 10, he, I'm going to start there. Hear, O my son, and receive my sayings, and the years of their, your life shall be many. You want to increase your years, take heed to this. This right here. This book you got in your hand, whether it's in your phone, you take heed to it, and it alone, it alone, see, if you can get your receiver on, if you can get your receiver on, and here's how you get your receiver on, you begin to let go on all the offenses that you have harbored all your life. You begin to peel them. See, the grace message begins to peel like an onion all of the harboring offenses. See, really, it's a work on you, setting you free from everything that Satan had tried to build. See, we, he knows we have an, an automatic defense mechanism. And that automatic defense mechanism is when we are hurt, we will begin to guard our own heart. And when we begin to guard, it's, it's our makeup. It's our, it's our corrupt makeup. In the garden, we went straight to, to Dad. But now Dad is in heaven. And we're not made aware of of him down here on earth to the level that we need so we begin to guard our own heart and this is probably one of the number one mechanisms that Satan uses because when he can get you to guard your own heart you're building bricks I love uh, Kenny Chesney put a song out and said said I, I, I build the bricks of walls around my heart saying I'd never fall in love again guarding my own heart but see, what you have to understand is when we guard our own heart, when we build our own walls and build our own bricks, what Satan knows is you're not just, see, there's, there's not an opportunity to build them, build bricks around your heart and have an, an itemize who is in and who is out. You're the only one in. Everyone else is out. So as you begin to build the bricks around your heart, you're not, just, you're not just bricking your loved ones out. You're bricking your opportunities out. You're bricking God out. You see? And Satan knows this. He doesn't really have to mess with you too much. Remember that the big things you're going to deal with in life is going to be circumstances. Circumstances and situations. And people. 
And those circumstances, situations, and people can bring an offense. And the offense, the offender is someone who has everyone boarded out. He has no, no real worth of himself. And so he treats you or she treats you with the same treatment and value that they have for themselves. See? And if he can get you all offended up and girded up, hurt people hurt people. Okay? That's why he's telling you, here's the, here's the way. He said, hear, my, hear, O my son, and receive my sayings, and the years of your life shall be many. When we can allow God to heal our heart, then we can begin to receive love. Or we can receive love, his love, and when we receive his love, he, he heals our heart. And when he heals our heart, then we can contain love. And when we can contain love, then we become a vessel of honor. All right? The Bible talks about a vessel of honor and dishonor. You can be saved and broken. And it doesn't matter how much we pour into you or how much God pours into you. You just keep leaking. And you're not, you, there's no ability for the vessel to be used to take an over and pouring fresh water into someone else's life. Okay? So here's, here's the deal. He wants to heal us. And then we have the ability to receive. And when we get in the position where we can receive, and here's, here's a good indicator. I said this last night at the wedding. I said there was a time whenever I would just, he wanted me to put him through some kind of, minister, uh, some kind of a marital counseling that I do for young couples. Young couples are different than people who have lived life and been broken and now trying to restore life. And that, that those young couples, I get into a session, I have about a six-week session of marital counseling, and that third, about third week, I am trying to separate them. I do everything I can to break that thing up in a session. You go, that's horrible, Pastor. I can't believe that you have marital counseling and you try to break the people, though, that marriage up before they even get started. If I can break it up in an hour, <laughs> it wasn't worth much anyway, okay? You need to go ahead and part now before you have to start going to an attorney and parting the, you know, the money and everything, okay? Might as well just do it now. But with him, I just kept picking at him. Every time I got around him, I'd bring up his past situation. I bring up the person who hurt him, and I'd throw it at him. Sometimes I'd throw it at his legs. Sometimes I'd throw it at his head. Sometimes I'd throw it at his gut. Wherever he wasn't guarded, I'd throw it at him. I said, Pastor, how could you be so horrible? I was waiting for the day when he didn't strike out. Because when he didn't strike out, I knew God had healed his heart. And when God had healed his heart, I knew then his heart was prepared for another another one and until that time the other one was in jeopardy see the other one would be in jeopardy climbing into a broken heart a bitter heart deep down seeds of bitterness and anger and resentment you gotta get that out because when you get that out all of a sudden the flow begins and God is starting to flow through that young man like, like I mean, the blessing, like he's never experienced before in his life. And I'm just explaining to you using him as a, as a tool right now. You need to understand, the moment you let go is the moment you're free. They're not free. You're free. You're free to receive. And until you're free to receive, you're never going to have the power to perform you're never going to have the power to pour out you're never going to have the power of effectiveness you're never go you're going you're anointed that God has his favor on you but the power to be effective in that favor 
See, I can have favor with someone, but if I'm not effective once I come in face-to-face -face with that someone, all we had was coffee, and no destinies were changed. No opportunities were seized. Do you see the difference? It's absolutely vital. Because 2017 is the year of victory. 17 is the year, is the number of victory. Now, you get all excited. Well, I went to the enemy's camp and I took back what he stole from me. I don't even remember that, that song. Took back what he stole from me. Took back what he stole from me. We got all excited. It's the year of victory. Victory! Okay, well, we know we're going to have victory. But what do you do, what does an army do after the victory? See, this is what we've got to get prepared for in 2017. Because victory is assured. Now once the army is recognized, see they've already been trained on what to do after victory. Victory is the plunder. Victory is the seizure. Victory is the, is the taking over. Victory is the rebuilding. Victory is is the disbursement and the power to disperse okay God's not interested in giving us victory just so that we can sit on the bed and throw up the one dollar bills over our head you know woohoo I hit the jackpot Woohoo! I'm I'm free from alcohol. Woohoo! I'm 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 I've got my marriage restored. Woohoo! He wants you to be excited about that. But there's more to come after the victory. It's taking it back and and turning it back to its original purpose and plan money has a plan there's a plan behind money there's a purpose behind money for the love of it that, that's a bad deal but but you can't let go of the purpose and the plan for it see, see I'm going to tell you we, this makes people very uncomfortable I am a uh, prosperity gospel preacher Okay, and there's a reason for it. Because the world we live in, if you want to find out where, where the wealth is, go where who is in charge. They've got the money. Why? Because money brings an influence. If nothing else, it pays for it. Why do you think there's Billions of dollars spent on an election trying to get in front of your face and influence you. Okay? So I'm going to open up some stuff today. <laughs> oh, my God. I don't know if you're ready. I'm not sure. <laughs> oh, my, 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 my. Okay, go down to verse 18. I don't have time to go, ever, go everywhere I wanted to go today, but we'll go to verse 18. But the path of the just is as a shining light that shineth more and more into the day of perfection. In other words, revelation comes. The Bible says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet. So the word of God, the revelation word, revelation word of God comes, and it, and, it, and it comes to us little by little, line upon line, precept upon precept, brick upon brick, layer upon layer, to build in us a, a beacon so that we can go forward. Our path gets brighter and brighter. For the world out there, they're saying, well, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. You need to get I don't know out of your vocabulary. When you don't know, just shut your mouth and ask God because he knows. He knows. Get I don't know out of your vocabulary. Pat and I have been working on it for a long time. We don't say I don't know much. When I do, it just it's almost like somebody hits me in the back of the head when I say I don't know. It's almost like, what did I say that for? 
because I may not know, but I'm the child of the one who does know. So why don't I just go to him and find out what I, what I need to know? Okay? The world out there is the one lost in the darkness. They don't know. They don't know what you're about to know and what you already know. What, th what things are about to come, what, what are we about to approach? See, when we were coming into 2016, I wasn't sure. 2015, I wasn't sure. I wasn't sure how God was going to work this thing out. I knew what the end result would be, but I, the travel, the journey there, I wasn't liking the idea of it. You know? And early 2016, I just asked God, who? And he wouldn't give me a who. You know what he said to me? I have given this nation. And he named out six choices. I looked at those six people, the six top, those six right there, I've given them choices. He says, and you choose. You know what he was telling me? That's when I sat down with Floyd not long after that. Floyd was concerned. He had already chosen his. <laughs> and everybody knew he'd chosen his. <laughs> but I sat down with Floyd and he was concerned. I don't know if we're going to make it. I don't know if, I don't know if, we, I don't know if we're going to make it. I said, it's... It, and, and I started saying this early, early this year. And I had a gentleman down in Anna. He just didn't know what to think about this. But this is part of what I want to say to you today. I said early on, I said, uh, he, he'll win. I said, I, said, I said, there's going to be a turn of events. And, 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 and here's the deal. Well, I don't know. She may, she may win. She can't win. Well, what do you mean she can't win? I said, it's not biblically correct in revelation of the gospel she cannot win well how can you say that pastor well you have to have you have to get on the wall and you've got to ask God to find out which direction you need to be facing to see what he needs to tell you and show you folks we're so close that if 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 this if this thing was allowed to go on we would be we would be saturated in the UN. This nation would be given over. To, that's where we're. That's where we. That's the track we were on, and in in in, in, in revelation, understanding of the end times, that's impossible for this nation to be tied that deep with the UN. That's why you saw Britain separate. Stuff's happening. And if you open up your Bible, all of a sudden you start understanding like you never understood before. Because it's not 1960 anymore, and it's 19, 1970 anymore, and it's not 1980 anymore. We're not living in shadows and guesses. The light is brighter today than it's ever been before. Why do you think Israel's getting picked on so much right now? I've got news for you, and this is going to be real, I, you know, I, I want to be careful. I want to, the light is getting brighter for us. Victory is assured for us, and you need to thank God. I, you know, I used to hear people say, you need to thank God you're in the USA. I'm telling you today, like never before, you need to be thankful you are a born United States citizen. You need to be thankful that your parents, your grandparents, your great-grandparents, somewhere down in your genealogical pool made the decision and a hunger came into their heart to go to a new world, a new freedom, a new opportunity, and, and go over there because I'm telling you right now, you're in one of, the, one of the nations that will never see the mark of the beast. Oh, hold on. I know right there I got, okay, Pastor... I, uh, not because we're the great United States. If you go into Revelation, you find out he only gets a third. And if all of the United States, just if, all of the United States was the only people that made it to heaven. No, we're not. But I'm just saying, for numbers' sake, if all of the United States, when the trumpet sound, went to heaven, do you realize in the, in, in the worldwide populace, that's only a remnant. 
And I've got good news for you, whether you, it's good news to you or not. He's not coming this year. How can you say that? Economist, world economist, Christian world economist will tell you that we are not in a position yet. See, the church, religion has taught us in a fear-based manner that when everything's bad, so we start looking not to the word, but we look to the news. And the news hooked us in the nose and led us in whatever direction they wanted to lead us all the way to the point that so much stuff is okay now. Good is bad and bad is good. And the news has led us just, just led us right on down the road to it. Been doing it for 30, 40 years. I listen to Christians talk about their favorite net news network and where they get their news and I just shake my head. Folks, you need to realize that there is going to be a transfer of wealth. And I believe 2017 will be the threshold we have just stepped into of a true beginning because it's not going to be just the superstars on television. Now you know what I think of television ministry. I, I, it's not, it, this is the gospel, and the gospel was written for everyone. And a worldwide shift, there's no way it can happen in the next 12 months. That would be impossible. Could it happen in the next eight years? I'm a little doubtful. In the next 16, I'm pretty sure it's going to happen. I, I mean, that's just, you just take that. I, I'll, I, I believe I'll still be around, and you can say, you were wrong. And I'll say, yes, I was. <laughs> okay? But we've got to understand if there's going to be a transfer. If there is a day of victory coming to the church, then what's the purpose of the transfer? What's my purpose in that time? And what do I do to get ready? Because he's coming after a church that's ready. Hello? A ready church is a church that's got purpose. A, a reason to live, a reason to wake up. A value that the air I'm breathing is important. It's important that I get it. Because I'm in position for kingdom advancement. Everybody say with me, kingdom advancement. See, we don't, church does not talk like this. It's too much of a war terminology. They better wake up. We're in a war. We're, we're on the winning side. I just asked God a long time ago, I just want to be on the field somewhere. I don't care if I'm a water bottle guy. I don't really care. I just don't want to be in the stands. I want to be a participant. Okay, I want to smell the grass. I want to see the mud. I want to be in the middle of it somewhere. Okay? I'm just... Come on down here to verse 22. Uh, let's get down here where I wanted to show you something. All right. Verse 22. For... Th Go up to 20. My son, attend to my words, incline thine ears to my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thy heart. For they, watch this. Just keeping them in my eyes and his words in the midst of my heart. And that's all. You don't have to beg. You don't have to plead. You don't need a prayer circle. You don't need, you don't need somebody to lay hands on you. All those things are, I'm not saying they're bad, but I'm just saying you've come to a time and you've been prepared for a time such as this. Are, are we going to keep, are we going to keep, you know, are we going to be the snowflakes of the kingdom of God? Or are we going to get out there and we're going to take it back? Huh? 
Which one are we going to be? For they are life unto those that find them and health to all their flesh. Keep your heart with all diligence for out of it are the issues of life. Now watch what it says. Pro, put away from thee a, pro, a forward mouth, a froward mouth, and a perverse lip. Put far from thee. Put one from thee and the other far from thee. Now we understand that out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And now he's talking about the mouth and the tongue talk in, in action. He said, keep that perverseness away from you. Okay? Now I, I had to know what that was because sometimes we just look at that and we go, well, that's telling dirty jokes. That's... Uh, that's, that's uh, talking things that shouldn't be said, and, or that's lying, or that's uh, fibbing, or that's all that. No, it goes so much deeper than that. It goes so much deeper than that because here's, here's what he's talking about. Froward means to not up, to distort, or make crooked. Okay? So your mouth has the ability to knot things up, how many of you ever been pulling something through a pulley and there's a knot in it, in that row? <laughs> you can get it over it, but you're going to spend a whole lot more time jerking and pulling, you know. And then when you do, whatever you're pulling comes flying from the other end, you know, because the steady tension is no longer there. So you got a, you got a potential mess on your hands. Spilling out everything or, 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 or messing up everything you were planning to pull your way, Okay. So your mouth has the, the ability to knock things up. Your, not, your mouth has the, your lips have the ability to distort things and make things crooked. That's, that's its definition. While the tongue, at the same time, while the lips are moving, the tongue has the ability to, to, to be perverse, to turn and depart like in, in a moment your destiny. It, it actually means to turn it back to where you were delivered from in a moment. It says like, like an overnight thing. Actual definition, overnight. This thing's powerful. It's powerful. And he's saying if you keep his word in the midst of your heart, out of the abundance of your heart, what's going to flow? His word. So we need to get his word on this. You see? His, the last thing we need to do as the church as a whole right now is start running around like chicken little. The sky is falling, the sky is falling, the sky is falling. Because we will turn off with that perverse mouth, we will turn off the hearing of the millennials. And the millennials, folks, as much as I dread saying this, they're the nation of tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> as scary as that might seem. But they're looking for leadership because they have never seen any. They don't know what leadership is. They don't know what direction is. They don't understand the line upon line, precept upon precept concept. And if somebody doesn't stand up, if some bodies don't stand up to lead, there's a crushing blow coming to a whole generation of reality, a crushing blow of reality. And it, could, it, will, it will collapse everything. It could collapse our economy. We don't understand how far-reaching it can be. And see, we're on the year of victory, and I'm telling you there's a transfer of wealth coming, but a transfer of wealth doesn't help if it collapses the economy. So by our own words, we can knock the whole thing up. While we're pulling in the, the abundance, over pull and that bucket just dumps and now God's going to make sure that doesn't happen because he's going to put people in the pulpits and people in the pews 
they're going to hear and know and speak and take their influence to the nations. Okay? We've never had a better time and opportunity than the Christian has right now. Even though right now we could get really tied up with the, what was it, 90,000, no, no, 90 million, 90, 90 million Christians that were killed this last year, tortured and, 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 and persecuted, not here, but overseas. And we have an ability to, see, that's what, the money coming to us, the, the, the transfer of wealth, the preparation for this, and I'm going to talk a little bit more of about it in the next few weeks and months. There's a preparation of our heart to get there. And I'm going to show you just one small, can I give you just one small um, test? Can I give you just one small test? And I'm going to close. It's 1057, and we'll get you out of here pretty decent, and you're going to learn something. I'm going to give you a test. and I'm getting behind that wall, and Steve doesn't like that when I get over there. Um, okay, can I, can I give you a little test? Okay, because um, I've shared a little bit about what the vision of this church is. Okay? Now let me ask you a question. Leroy, can, can I ask you a question? If you were able to, just think on it just a moment, how many people do you know that if you could snap your finger would be sitting here hearing the grace message and receiving the deliverance that you have experienced over the last few years? How many people do you know that you would love to see? That Would it be 25 people? 50? Say about, say about 25? 50? 50. Floyd? It's that same question. How many? Over 100. So now we got 150. Okay. How many? 75? Okay. Are you keeping that track of that? Somebody go ahead and keep track of that. I'm going to lose it. David, I don't mean to pick on you, but how many? 50? A couple hundred. I figured you'd be a couple hundred. <laughs> You're about to disappoint me. <laughs> Kurt, how many? A couple hundred. Are we getting that number? All right. All right. Denny, how many? Hundred. Hundreds or hundred? Hundred. I mean, I'm just, we're not, this is not, I'm not going to come back to you on this and say, okay, you got it wrong. I'm just, you know, uh, Nancy, you've been out there in the workforce and, and, and met a lot of people, led a lot of people. How many people would you know that, just off the top of your head? 200? Okay. All right. Now, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Take that number. Add them all together. Somebody add them all together for me. Okay. I'm up here. I'm not, my mind's not there to be able to do that. Somebody give me a figure. 900? I can't hear everybody. I want 925. Now divide that number, okay, by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 32, 33, 34, 35, 35. I'm just getting an average here. Okay, on average in this congregation, it's probably a low average, of 25 people you know that you'd like to see this. Now, 25, that's 900 people, okay? That's 925 people, all right? Now, out of that 925 people that this congregation knows, how many of those people, once they experience the delivering power of the grace message in the next few years, how many people do they know would like to experience the same? Even if it's 25, do you know how, how fast 25 times 900? Put 25 times 900. Do you see what kind of number we're looking at? All right. All right. Now I'm testing you. and you do, you, I'm, I'm going to show you the test here in just a second.
We have got to open our hearts. We have got to pull up our stakes. We have got to stretch our tents. We have got to make room. We have got to open our hearts. We have got to stretch our tents. We have got to pull up our cords. We have got to allow God to expand our borders. We've got to do this. It's got to happen in our heart. It's got to happen in our heart. Because when I talk about what God wants to do, I hear the statements of, I don't want to go to a church that large. Uh Uh-oh, now you know whether you passed the test or not. Because if you don't want to go to a church that large, then in your heart, you are sitting among friends that you don't want their friends to know this. Because if they were to know it, then they'd be sitting next to me, and the building would be just way too big. And I wouldn't be able to have personal contact and and that personal attention. And I wouldn't be able to, to be, you know a shining star or somebody who gets this or gets that or I it would be too crowded for me to drive into that parking lot it would just be too much for me I don't like crowds it would be so impersonal do you think it's just gonna be you and a couple others in heaven he created this thing so that we would have heaven on earth and we've got to open our hearts and love is the only thing that can open our hearts. You're talking about just, just the connections of this community. Just this little community is as is, is far-reaching as 22,500 people. And when you can't wrap your head around going to a church of 300, you are in trouble. Because you're not only shutting off God's opportunity to flow through you, you're shutting off God's opportunity to flow through a region. And we become the knot in the cord rather than the grease on the wheel. Wow. It's eye-opening, isn't it? (laughs) It's it's eye-opening. Because guess what? That number's bigger than that. It's bigger than that. Do you see we're in position of victory to take back what the enemy has stolen? If you take those numbers and you take a look at people who are saved, you can't throw a dead cat in Illinois, southern Illinois. You cannot throw a dead cat and not hit a Christian. Somebody, now when I say Christian, I'm talking about somebody who at some point in their time received Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. All right? Now, if that's the case... What if everyone, the grace message just opens your eyes to who you really are in Christ and what your potential is of receiving from Him? Now, what if everyone got to understand who they were in Christ, got their identity straight, and started receiving from God? How fast would we take back what the enemy has stolen from us? Now, who wants to stop that? I know none of you do. You just weren't thinking when you said, I don't want to go to a church that big. I'm the one that gets, I mean, Pat will tell you, you get me in a crowd and I get shaky. We're getting ready to go to a minister's conference. And I take a couple deep breaths before I walk inside that room. And it's all ministers. You'd think I'd be as comfortable as I could ever be. That's a lot of people. Well, how many people is it, Pastor? About 1,200 is all. And I'm taking a deep breath to go in there. But I don't care. I'd rather take a deep breath and take the plunge than to step out and go, that's too big for me. Because I want everything God has. And I want everything God has for you. And I want everything that God has for me. And I want everything God has for this nation. But I, I, and I certainly, I'm particularly interested in what God has for Southern Illinois. We are created to make this place, people have called it a wasteland. They have called it nothing more than than Little Egypt, a wasteland, a nothing, a nobody. I've had pastors tell me over and over again, why don't you leave? Why don't you come on up here with us? Why don't you come over here with us? Why don't you come over here with us? Why don't you come down south with us? Why don't you go with us? 
because Dane, Southern Illinois, but see, we were created by God to go and take a wasteland and turn it into the Garden of Eden. And the true power of God working on earth, His will be done on earth as it is in heaven. The true power in that is the result of it. And you've got to stick around for results. You can't walk out the door too early. <laughs> Amen? I'm not, I'm not walking out the door too early. All right, do you know a little bit more now than what you knew before? Maybe you know a little bit more about yourself right now how you're thinking see amen it's time to open up it's time to open up didn't mean to really zing you that you know I love you I love you I, oh I love you but we got to open up our hearts and open up our hearts our arms our minds amen because because I'm telling you we got to get prepared because we're gonna take victory and, and he's gonna prepare us to know how to take it over, to know what to do with it. Amen. 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 We're going to usher it in. Because i got news for you. He ain't coming. He's not coming during terrible times. Everybody's looking for him then. He said, I'm coming when they don't look. People, people when things are good, that's when people ain't looking for Jesus to come. <laughs> that's another one for you to think on for a little bit. <laughs> okay. So you know what I'm looking for? I'm looking for the day that I wake up. I'll know Jesus is coming really soon when I wake up and these 54-year eyes see like a 20-year-old. And I'm going, did I forget to take my contacts out last night? Huh? When my youth is restored like the eagle, when I don't think about finances any longer, I'm thinking about financing someone. When I, when I, see, see? Ooh. Then look up. Amen. You be blessed. Happy New Year. Amen. Thank you for being here. God bless you.